And we are finally at the last part of this week's comic book review, this week being January 13th, the Wednesday of... Anyway, so starting the end with uh, Injection number six, start of the second volume of this book, and just a really fun little story to get us back into the swing of things. Um, this book involves uh, Vivek Headland of the um, of the injection team. He is the incredibly rich, incredibly smart private investigator uh, portion of the team. This follows him in the present day, so not in the past, as he is approached for a new case. Um, and the whole thing is very Sherlock Holmes. It's, in fact, it's very kind of BBC Sherlock. Um, Vivek is bored. He's way too smart, um, but, I mean, he's, he's a lot wealthier than Sherlock is, but otherwise, very, if you like Sherlock, you'll probably like uh, Vivek Headland here. And the case is of the stolen ghost. This guy here, very rich man, his wife recently died, his son recently died, and he claims to have been visited by the spirit of his wife's ghost um, whenever he would pull out and look at a picture of her. Someone stole the picture, and the ghost is gone with it, and so Vivek is on the case. But more importantly, something is wrong with Vivek's ham sandwich. And so Vivek puts his incredible deductive mind um, and, uh, and his incredible resources to finding out what is wrong with his ham sandwich. And I don't, I'm not going to spoil what's wrong with his ham sandwich. I'm not going to spoil where the, where the rest of this book goes. But it is fun. It's a fun, smartly written, hilarious little book. Um, and, I mean, it's a new side of injection that we haven't seen before. Um, the first arc was kind of, kind of weird horror type stuff. And this is, uh, so far, uh, more lighthearted and more kind of detective based. Um... But yeah, really fun book. It's just imagine uh, like Sherlock Holmes and the case of the weird sandwich, and that is this issue. It's fun, again, fun, smart, and uh, I can't wait to see where it goes. Next up is Red Sonia number one, uh, start of a new volume, uh, written by Marjorie uh, Bennett, or sorry, Marguerite, Mar Marguerite. I got the name wrong entirely, but M. Something Bennett, uh, issue number one, following the Swords of Sorrow, big crossover event, so uh, now Dynamite is rebooting their characters a bit, and um, we start this arc a bit slow. Well, I mean, the, 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 the issue starts pretty big, actually, with Sonya fighting the uh, Thunder, what's it called? The uh, Thunder... Bull. That's what it is in my notes. I, didn't, I actually wasn't referring to my notes at all. But yes, the uh, Red Sonia fighting the Thunderbolt in order to get its heart, in order to make a cure for the king of uh, Hyrcania who is dying of old age. The cure does not work, the king dies, and Red Sonia leaves the kingdom for a while, for one year, and then after we see her come back. So she's gone for a year, she comes back to the kingdom, uh, first time experiencing the rule of the new king, and everything is perfect. Um, she goes to town, and the the streets are well patrolled by, by guards, people are wealthy, everyone's fed, everyone seems happy, and Sonia the she-devil has nothing to do now. Um, she's bored, and she doesn't think she has a place anymore, in uh in Hyrcania. But of course things are not as perfect as they seem. There is a price for everything that is happening here that Sonia learns about and decides to fight against. But not gonna talk much about it, kind of a spoiler. I really enjoyed this issue. I think it's a good it's a little slow. I mean this this issue mainly deals with Sonia being bored, um, because everything is too perfect. Um, it's not until the last, like, two or three pages where we get an idea of what the real conflict of this arc will be, but it seems to be an interesting one, pitting Sonia against a much larger, um, enemy than 
uh, than most of her, I mean, than, like, previous Gelsimon, uh, written stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I really want to see where it's going. The art is gorgeous, and I already showed you the big spread of this page with her, with the, uh, Thunderbolt, but we also have more, like, lighter scenes, like, I already, like, this page here, when she's first entering the kingdom after a year being away. Uh, so really liking the art, it knows how to do dramatic, it knows how to do kind of, uh, serene and colorful and peaceful really well. Uh, Sonia, Sonia's a bit cuter, um, I think, like, she's, her face is a bit rounder, she has more, like, puffier cheeks and lips, um, but, uh, but she's still, I still like the way she emotes, the smile is still very Sonia. Um, it's not like a, a cute little girly girl smile, this is still the smile of someone who, you know, who likes to drink beer and get dirty and whatever. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm gonna keep on reading this, uh, liking where it's going, liking the writing, um, so yeah, everything about this book just really works for me, and I'm glad that, uh, Redstone is in good hands after Gail Simone, but... Speaking of Gail Simone, the last book this week is written by her. It is by Dark, published by Dark Horse, and it is Surviving Megalopolis. Uh, this is a sequel series to a book that Gail Simone kickstarted two or three years ago now, um, I think, called Leaving Megalopolis, um, which takes place in a city that was full of superheroes. They all turn evil for some reason, and the original, it was a trade. Well, it was, it was just a graphic novel, because it wasn't, like, separate issues that was collected. It was a graphic novel about a group of people who are part of this town, after all the heroes have turned evil, trying to escape. And so we rejoin that world, we rejoin Megalopolis in this book. If you haven't read the, graph the original graphic novel, I recommend it, it's really good. But if you don't want to pick it up, there is a brief summary in the front that I think does a pretty good job of getting you up to speed. The beginning of this book then deals with, uh, we, we begin by reintroducing ourselves to the heroes of this world. Heroes, in quotation marks, because they've all turned evil, as they're led by Southern Belle, who's this person who's kind of a Wonder Woman analog, uh, in order to fish out Overlord. Um, Overlord was the Superman of this world. At the end of leaving Megalopolis, he um, sacrificed himself in order to save the human survivors, trying to leave Megalopolis. And so we start this book with the rest of the heroes fishing him back up from the water in order to, I guess, torture him. We're not exactly shown what they do with his body after bringing him back up. We then uh, see the perspective of this mysterious sniper, who turns out to be a returning character from the original graphic novel. Um, and while this is all happening in Megalopolis, we cut to another survivor, um, this guy, Harold Lamb, who is escaped Megalopolis, but gets um, roped back in by this guy, uh, Tanner Bennett, over here. Um, is it Bennett? Bennett Tanner, not Tanner Bennett. Yeah. Oh no, it is Bennett Tanner. Anyway, yeah, so this guy, Bennett Tanner, who wants to recruit... Mr. Lamb to go back to Megalopolis to uh, do another rescue party for one of his clients, who's a very wealthy woman. Um, so that is what we have going on. We have a mysterious sniper aiming for the heroes of Megalopolis, and then Harold Lamb um, getting recruited to go back into the city he spent some time trying to escape from. Another new character we are introduced to in this issue, and a completely new character, is the Crimson Shadow, um, who is a another hero from Megalopolis. Seems to be a kind of play satire on the Batman type of hero. Uh, he's clearly got some Daredevil inspiration too in him, and he pops up. Um, uh, he pops up and uh, starts going after our sniper. Um, and we see how that all comes together by the end. We find out who the sniper is. We uh, find out a bit more of the Crimson Shadow, and we see uh, what you know. And uh, 
we see whether Harold accepts the offer to go back to Megalopolis or not. Overall, a pretty good first issue. I would recommend reading Leaving Megalopolis before uh, doing this issue if you can, um, just because it does give you a better introduction to these characters. These are characters in this book, um, even though it's in issue one, that we're kind of expected to know, or the book has a lot of givens, has a lot of proper nouns and names and stuff um, that it expects you to be familiar with. Um, and I mean, it provides enough backstory otherwise. There are flashbacks, there's the title page and stuff. Um, but if you want to really flesh out this world, um, the best way to do it is to pick up Leaving Megalopolis. Um, if you haven't read it, this could be a little challenging to get into. You might have to just kind of bear with it and decide, okay, I'm not quite sure what's happening, but I'll take the book's word for it that this person's important and blah, blah, blah. It's a lot of telling rather than showing. Uh, but if you, get, if you can get past that, or if you can find the original, this is a really fun continuation of the story. It's adding new characters, it's um, revisiting characters, um, or just, I guess everyone's a new character if you haven't read the first, uh, the first entry. Um, so all the characters are, uh, seem, well, they seem like they fit um, with the whole kind of conceit of this is a superhero world gone bad, and it's just playing around with that um, idea in very inventful, fun ways. Um, everyone's really colorful. Um, yeah, I just I, I just quite like this book. I want to see where it's going. Um, and like a lot of Gail Simone stuff, the dialogue's just really well done, really human, and everyone has their own voice. Everyone has, like, you know, if not clear motivations, they have clear thoughts on their motivations. Like, if they're not they don't actively want something. They have things that they are considering as to whether or not they want it, um, or whether they want someone else to want it or want to be a part of something else. So, yeah. Uh, as a first issue, not all that great. This would be a really good, like, third issue of something. Um, not a great introduction, but a fun story if you know where you're starting from. And that is it for this week. Also, the back is a uh, kind of tourism poster for Megalopolis instead of an ad like you usually get on the backs of comic books, so that's pretty cool too. And that is that for this week's comic books. Thank you for watching. Um, if you're interested in DC or Marvel books, I reviewed those, or at least the DC and Marvel books that I picked up this week in the previous parts of this week's review, so if you're inclined, please check those out. Um, if you like this video, please like it. If you care about my opinions on comic books and other things, um, I do videos every week about comics, so please subscribe. Any comments, questions, anything whatsoever, please leave them in the comments, and I will try my best to uh, start a conversation there or continue a conversation that you decide to start. But if you decide that's it, uh, I do want to thank you for watching and hope that you do join me for some more comic book reviews.